Hi, welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids with me, Kat Hansen, your host. Hi everyone, it's me Kat. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, today, I thought I would talk about some visitors that I get to my home and the mountains around my home. Um, and I'm going to have them here in this video so that way you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. Now, some people have asked me a couple different times um, about the portals, you know, and I've been talking about portals for years and I was really happy when NASA validated that and said that, hey, you know what, there really are portals, you know, so now people don't look at me like I'm totally out there with my hair on fire. So, I want to say that when the portals are around, I myself get a humming inside my head and, um, it's real deep. It's a real deep vibrational hum. And the closer I get to the portal, um, it actually starts making my teeth ache because they're shaking inside, you know, down deep. And um, that's how I know I'm getting closer and closer to one. Uh, when the portals open, some of them are on a certain schedule, you know. Uh, when the earth rotates, they'll open. Uh, there are others that are opened by the beings that are coming here so there is no set schedule for that um, I call them realmers I've always called them realmers of course they have other names for themselves but um, I call them realmers or visitors because they're coming from different realms um, in this video you're gonna notice in the background that there are a couple different ones that I've pictures up uh, in my group the red path of spirit beings I used to put up picture after picture of them but I feel like that was kind of redundant because it just seems like I overwhelm people with my pictures at times so I stopped posting them but for this video and for that reason I'm gonna have them in here so that you guys can actually see what I'm talking about and know that hey you know what cats not crazy so anyway uh, the first guy you're going to notice on here is the green guy. He looks like a lizard with a wicked, wicked mouth. You know, you're going to see him. He's a big guy. He usually stands around four and a half, almost five feet tall. Um, and they've been coming here for years. Years, years, years. You know, um, they eat cats, dogs, uh, raccoons. I'm trying to think of everything I've seen them eat. They are not too mean you know but they don't want to be bugged by us you know they come here they want to experience this planet because this is a teaching planet you know so they're able to come here do what they got to do and then they leave um, then there are others that come here from different realm dimensions and want to stay here you know and those are the ones that um, you see them you know they live in our forests uh, some live underground, some live in caves, you know, um, some live on the mountain, some live in the swamp. You know, it's just deciding where they decide to make their home. You know, and every one of them has um, a reason for being here, you know, because this is a teaching planet. And the intelligence that exists inside of this planet um, has given everyone permission to be here. You know, that's what this planet was created for. <laughs> so... This green guy that you're looking at, um, I call him a guardian. You know, he runs around. He guards the portals. That's why I call him that. Because if there's like two or three of them in the portal, they're not going to let you in. And they get really ticked off at you if you try to get in. I mean, picture being in a department store. And you remember when you were like 10 or 12 and how everybody hung out in little groups, you know, and you went to do something and the other group would be like, no, this is ours. And they push you out. That's what these guys do, okay? Um, I don't invite them to my home because, as I said, they're not totally hostile, but they are too much of an attitude handful for me to deal with most of the time. And I don't want them eating my cats. So it's like, no, no, no. I don't want you coming down off the mountain to see me. So they don't. Um, I look 
right on the mountain, so they come to me when the portals open a lot. You know, I'm sitting here, I know when a portal opens, and I usually, if I'm home, will jump up, throw on my shoes, and go find it because it's opening. And sometimes I get beings that come here that don't want to be here. They've made a mistake, you know. It's like they got in, dialed the wrong number, and now they're lost. So that's another reason I go out to the portal, so that I can put them back, send them back to where they need to go. So there again, I'm being a good neighbor. Um, you're going to notice in this video that there's a dead something up in the tree and that is one that came through to our realm to die and from what I gathered as best as I could tell from speaking with him he had been to earth a long time ago when he was younger keep in mind some of these beings live a lot longer than human beings so he was here to pass away he wanted to be left alone for the most part um, I brought him here and he was here for um, a while I want to say about a month and when he finally passed I was going to bury him and because he was so big I was having a hard time moving him dragging him because I'm not Hercules and um it was actually my Sasquatch male, Kyasa, who did move him. I never asked him to do it either. That um, really surprised me that he would do that because usually they don't mess with the dead animals, you know, dead beings, dead people, whatever. <laughs> They're only animals I've ever seen them mess with that are dead or ones that they've killed. So it was interesting to me to go out one morning and find that Kiasa had placed him into the tree and I thought he had done it so that it could be um, like a, a Peruvian or excuse me like a Himalayan uh, burial ceremony you know death ceremony where he, the turkey vultures and the chicken hawks and everything <coughs> hawks eagles that we have around here would eat him, you know, a sky burial, and that wasn't the case at all. Um, that body sat in that tree for almost two years. It just turned into like a mummified piece of fur skin attachment, you know. It, um, it didn't get eaten by our animals, by the carrion eaters. It just sat up there until it decomposed. It was really strange because I'd never seen that before. So, Kiasa put it up there and when I asked him why he had done that, he said, you know, basically it died and it needed to pass along. And he, so he was being respectful and he had put it up there. And I thought that was really amazing to show the unity that the Sasquatch have, you know, with other beings from other realms. And that he didn't just leave it in the dirt and he didn't let me bury it in the dirt, you know. So I thought that was really amazing to me. <laughs> now, some of the other beings that you see here... Um, this guy with the hands on the branch looks like a big old cat kind of thing but he has hands and I had a funny name for him I called him Catman <laughs> which was kind of nice I, I liked him I liked having him here he stayed for about six months um, he's about three and a half feet maybe four feet tall and really nice he, um, he actually did kind of like purr when he talked. It was real rumbly and growly. And um, he liked my cats and my cats liked him. 
and it was really nice having him here. Um, he was here to observe our wild cats that stayed here. Um, we have mountain lions, we have bobcats, and <clears throat> he was really fascinated with them and wanted to understand that they were less intelligent than he was. So it was really interesting while he was here. Um, the next one that I have up is, are these bat wing guys. Now, I put up the statue and I mean statue, shame on me. I put up the the picture there with the hieroglyph on it of it. It looks like a statue. Anyway, these guys are really interesting. These are whistlers and they whistle a lot. It's almost like um like an African a sub sub African uh dialect because they whistle, click but then when you look at them and you realize, you know, they, they kind of look like a giant bat-eared person, maybe that's the sound um, echolocation makes that they use. I don't know. You know, um, I've never really sat down and talked to them. I mean, I've had them follow me, but I don't get a malevolent intent from them. They don't seem like they're going to harm me at all and I'm none of them have ever been aggressive when I've bumped into them and I do bump into them a lot in the desert um, but then again they're above the cave systems that we have here we have natural cave systems here so they're always in that area and they're very, you know they're very secretive want to be left alone you know don't want to be bugging us and I don't bug them so it's it's fine you know they're here um, the other ones that you're going to see up here are little statues that I put up. And these are from pre-Columbian times. And as you can see from my pictures, they knew about these guys. You know, they knew. And that was part of my big deal when I worked down there was the fact that um, a lot of the cryptids that we know about or have interactions with early peoples early humans had uh, interactions with them too you know and they were recorded in their own culture so for people to say oh this is a relatively new thing you know cryptozoology no it really isn't you know it's um, like I said they've been here a long time They've been here longer than humans at times, you know, because they've been coming here. They were created in their realm before us. Um, their civilizations are older than ours. So they were here. People interacted with them, you know, uh, maybe befriended them. I mean, who's to say? Because, you know, we really don't have a written record of what occurred between these beings and humans but for the most part I wanted to show that there were actually interactions between them and humans so that way people understand what I have been saying in that um, in these interactions some Native American tribes had their own spokesperson that dealt with them you know, and traded with them, you know, interacted with them, befriended them. There were all sorts of situations, you know. And here in the Southwest, it's really nice because the peoples that lived here, like the Hohokam, you know, um, were really big into trading. And they had enormous settlements here, you know, like cities. And they actually kept their own forms of records by um, illustrating their interactions on rocks and canyon walls and things like that, you know, petroglyphs. And it's really nice because it shows a record, a reference, you know, and we can um, date those with the pigments and stuff that they used so we know approximately when they had interaction or when this was recorded you know so you can actually trace back to where 
for instance, you can say, oh, this interaction happened a thousand years ago, you know, or this interaction happened 400 years ago. So it just helps you to see that when there is some type of record um, of these people also interacting with these beings, you know, um, you're going to see, too, that when you're out in the forest and you bump into someone or something that you don't know, um, be aware that there are numerous beings here that live underground, live in the cave systems, uh, live in the forests, you know, um, high places they go to, um, because they're trying to have minimal involvement, you know. It's like if we go camping, we don't want to have an experience with 10,000 people coming to our campground, you know, and throwing beer cans around and everything else. We go, well, at least I do, when I go camping, I pick the quietest spot. I pick where I want to be away from people so that I can have my own experience. And that's what these beings do. You know, they're everywhere. You're going to see them, like I said, uh, deserts, mountains. Sometimes you see them in city parks. You know, that's where they want to hang out. And we just have to be accepting and more tolerant and understanding um, that sometimes these beings or people even, really, you can classify them as people, you know, they just want to come here, experience what they need to experience, learn what they need to learn, and then they leave, you know? Now, that being said, there are some other types of beings that come here that people are going to run into, and they really don't have any answers for them in safety other than what I practice. Um, there are some big ones that come through. They're like, um, they remind me of ligers. If you go on the internet and look up a picture of a liger, they're huge, okay? And that's about the size of these cats. Um, they come through, they come here, and I notice that when they're here, they seem to want to hunt um, big game like a cow, a horse, you know, things like that. Um, and they just think it's great fun, you know, like a cat with a mouse. That's how they are around the cattle. And these guys cannot make themselves invisible, but they do have the ability to almost appear invisible. Um, I really think that Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, um, had a run-in with one of these cats. I really do, because as a an adult, after running into one of them, I thought to myself, you know, that's exactly like the Cheshire Cat. Because they can appear invisible, but you see those doggone eyes of theirs. They just shine, shine, shine. And the teeth, the mouth, appears. And then, after that, you kind of realize, hey, where's the body? And then you really start looking, and you can see it. It's a vague outline, you know. It's kind of like my picture of the Sasquatch, you know, where they're all standing there, but they're invisible, but you can still see them, you know, I mean, because I'm telling you they're in the picture, you can actually look at the picture and go one, two, three, four, there they all are, you know, and you can count them, because you can see the outlines of their heads, their bodies, and that's what these cat guys do, they are very, very strange. Um, I've had them chase horses. My horses wouldn't go back in the corral. I had to go get them. Um, yeah, these guys are very intimidating. And you can't uh, get rid of them. And my friend and mentor, John Beck Jord, um, had a run-in with one of these guys after, <coughs> excuse me, after I had told him to leave it alone. But he was fascinated with the concept of a giant Cheshire cat, you know, and he thought that's what it was going to be like. And it wasn't. Um, it really scared him. 
and it really put him off his game. Um, it was not a good experience for him. So I always tell people, if you run into one of these guys, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fascinating to see something that you don't normally see. You know, I mean, that's human nature. We're going to stare at it and want to know what the heck is that. But you need to keep safe and be safe. And I don't know that these guys would attack a human being because they've never done that around me. But just to be safe, um, I would make sure that I didn't get too close. You know, don't feed the animals, don't pet the don't pet the bears, you know, that sort of scenario. So these guys that come here pretty much are friendly. There are some that are not, but you know, I mean, not in an overt kind of way. They just come here, do their thing, and either A get along with us. Or B, they're like the, the snotty tourists, you know? And that's just the way that being a teaching planet is. So, I hope this has answered some of your questions. Um, again, this is kind of a mix between the portals and, and the beings that come through. And if you have questions about them, you know, you can always ask and I will do my best to explain to you. But I really did want to put this information out there because um, more and more our planet, its resonance is changing and its vibration has sped up, which people don't realize that as it speeds up, it enables us to shift more, you know, and that is exactly what's happening. We are shifting into different realities left and right. And it's kind of an interesting time, but it's chaotic on some of us who can experience it and understand what's going on. But also we have to remember that when it's doing this, the other beings that share this planet with us, this realm with us at that time, are experiencing some other effects that maybe we don't experience so I always try to help them in that if they're disorganized disoriented you know um, I always will do my best to put them back to a place where they can get home and they are more than welcome to stay with me until such time as they can go home well I think that I've explained that enough and talked your ears off. So I will let you go, but I will say thank you for tuning in to listen to me talk about it. And if you have any requests, let me know. Um, I will talk about what I know on that subject, if I know anything. And if I don't, um, I will try to find someone who does. In the meantime, I want you all to have a great week ahead, and thanks for listening.